This video will show you how to assemble the RadRunner 3 Plus. Photograph all four sides of the box and the label with the serial numbers. Keep these photos for your records. Open the box and locate the owner's manual and quick reference card. Keep these nearby for reference during the assembly. Locate the accessory box that contains the keys, charger, headlight, handlebar stem faceplate mounting hardware, front fender mounting hardware, battery terminal cover, pedals, and the assembly toolkit. The assembly toolkit contains a variety of tools to help with the assembly, but don't worry if you end up not using some of the tools. You'll also need a pair of flat side cutters, a pedal wrench, a bike pump with a Schrader valve and pressure gauge, a torque wrench with a set of Allen bits and a crowfoot bit, and some bicycle grease. Remove or snip the ties, securing the front wheel to the frame, and remove the wheel from the box and set aside for later. With the help of a friend, carefully lift the bike out of the box and set it upright on the back wheel and fork protector plate. Cut the zip tie securing the handlebar to the frame. Remove the packaging and then carefully lay the handlebar down beside the bike. Remove the front fender and set aside for later. Remove the rest of the packaging and recycle according to local rules. Or save the packaging if you might need to ship your bike in the future. Orient the front fork so that the brake rotor is on the non-drive side of the bike. If necessary, rotate the stem and front fork and make sure the cables are not twisted around the head tube. Hold the handlebar up on the stem with the brake levers facing forward and the throttle on the rider's right side. Trace the brake cable on the rider's left side to ensure it runs straight down. Locate the handlebar stem faceplate and mounting bolts in the accessory box. Center the handlebar on the stem. Install the four bolts by hand and use a 5mm Allen wrench to tighten part way in an X pattern until the handlebar is just tight enough so that you can adjust its angle. Adjust the handlebar so it is roughly parallel with the front fork. Ensure the gap between the faceplate and the stem is evenly spaced and the bolts are tightened evenly. Torque all four bolts in an X pattern to the value listed in your owner's manual. Locate the center kickstand and mounting hardware to prepare for installation. Remove the pre-installed bolts and washers from the center kickstand. Move the split washers and flat washers against the bolt ends. Orient the center kickstand so that the legs fold toward the back of the bike. Position the center kickstand under the mounting bracket in front of the rear wheel so that the center block fits through the mounting bracket and the bolt holes are aligned. Thread the bolts by hand through the mounting bracket and then use an 8mm Allen wrench to tighten the bolts until secure. Use a torque wrench to torque the bolts to the values listed in your owner's manual. Depending on when your bike was manufactured, it is possible that you may receive a bike with either a front wheel with a bolt-on axle mechanism or a quick-release skewer mechanism. Remove the protective plates from the front wheel and inspect the axle. Front wheels with the bolt-on axle will come with pre-installed nuts on the axle. If you have this type of front wheel, proceed with the following steps. Front wheels with the quick-release mechanism will have a shorter through axle where the quick-release skewer is inserted. If you have this type of front wheel, skip to the next section. During assembly, be careful not to touch the brake rotor, which has sharp edges and can cause serious injury, and leave oils from your hand on the brake rotor which can lead to diminished braking performance. Rest the front wheel on its side with the brake rotor facing up. Front wheel with bolt-on axle installation. Use these steps to install a front wheel with a bolt-on axle. Locate and remove the quick-release skewer that holds the fork on the fork protector plate. Open the lever, remove the thumb nut and cone spring on the opposite side, and remove the skewer. The fork and wheel protector plate packaging, including skewer, thumb nut, cone springs, and any spacers, 
are not used for the front wheel installation and can be recycled according to local rules. Fold up the kickstand and have a friend hold the bike upright and steady for the next few steps while you position and secure the wheel. Loosen the pre-installed axle nuts on the front wheel enough to fit in the fork dropouts, but do not remove them. If the front wheel comes with additional washers, position these against the axle nuts for installation. If there's a spacer between the brake pads and the front caliper, remove it now. With the help of a friend, carefully lift the front of the bike and lower the fork onto the wheel so that the brake rotor enters the caliper between the brake pads and the axle enters the fork dropouts fully. Pay attention to the brake rotor. It needs to slide between the brake pads. Once the rotor is between the brake pads, guide the fork onto the wheel so that the wheel axle enters the fork dropouts. Check that the wheel is fully seated in the fork dropouts on both sides. The wheel axle is level and parallel to the ground and that the wheel is centered. Use the 15 millimeter wrench to tighten the axle nuts on both sides of the fork until secure. If the front wheel comes with additional washers, make sure they are positioned against the axle nuts before tightening. Use a torque wrench with a 15 millimeter socket head or crow foot bit to torque the axle nuts to the value specified in your owner's manual. Test your front wheel installation. Check that the same amount of dropout is visible under the axle on both sides of the fork. If there's a difference, your axle is not fully inserted into both dropouts and you'll need to repeat the previous steps. If the axle is fully seated, perform the following tests. With your friend holding the front of the bike off the ground, spin the front wheel to ensure it has no wobble or looseness. Second, while straddling the bike with your hands on the handlebars, squeeze the front brake lever with your left hand. Rock the bike forward and backward and ensure the front brake is securely keeping the front wheel from turning and that there's no play or wiggle in the wheel, handlebars, or front fork. Any sign of play or wiggle is a sign that you may not have properly secured the front wheel and you should repeat the installation process. Perform these tests before every ride. Once your wheel is fully installed and tested for security, skip ahead to the Install the Headlight and Front Fender section. Front Wheel with Quick Release Skewer Installation Use these steps to install a front wheel with a quick release skewer. During assembly, be careful not to touch the brake rotor on the front wheel, as doing so can deposit oil on the rotor and reduce braking function. Rest the wheel gently on its side with the brake rotor facing up. Locate the quick release skewer holding the front fork in the fork protector plate. Open the lever and remove the thumb nut and cone spring on the opposite side. Remove the skewer from the protector plate, keeping the cam follower and the other cone spring in place. Pass the skewer through the wheel hub starting from the side without the brake rotor. Reinstall the cone spring on the other side. Both cone springs should point inward toward the wheel hub. Thread the thumb nut just a couple of turns, leaving enough space for the fork dropouts, which are the slots in the fork where the axle goes. Have a friend hold the bike steady and fully upright for the next few steps while you position and secure the wheel. Remove the hydraulic brake pad spacer from the brake caliper on the front wheel. Once you've removed it, do not squeeze the front brake lever until the wheel is fully installed. Make sure the quick release lever is open, then carefully lift the front of the bike, removing it from the protective plate. The fork packaging included a fork protector plate with a metal spacer rod and some spacers, which may be black plastic or look like thick metal washers. You can recycle these packaging elements according to local rules. Carefully lower the fork onto the wheel Pay attention to the brake rotor. It needs to slide between the brake pads. Once the rotor is between the brake pads, guide the fork onto the wheel so that the wheel axle enters the fork dropouts. The axle needs to go all the way into the dropouts. Check that the wheel is centered and that the axle is fully inserted in the dropouts. If the quick release lever is resting on the widest part of the cam follower, like this, turn it slightly 
so that it nestles into the curve of the cam follower. This is how it should look. Make sure that your friend holding the bike steady has it fully upright with some weight on the front wheel to help ensure that the fork is fully and evenly inserted onto the axle. Again, do not rely on a kickstand to steady your bike. Open the quick release lever all the way. Hold the thumb nut steady with one hand while you spin the quick release lever clockwise with the other hand. Tighten it as much as you can by hand. At this point, the lever should be too tight for you to close halfway. Loosen it by a quarter turn and try again. Repeat until you can close the lever halfway. Close the lever. This should be difficult and should leave an imprint in your hand. Fine-tuning the tightness can take several tries. If you are not able to exert great force on the quick-release lever, get help from a professional bike mechanic. Double-check that the closed lever isn't touching any bike component, like the fork or a fender bracket, which could keep it from closing completely. Check that the same amount of dropout is visible under the axle on each side of the bike. If there's a difference, your axle is not fully inserted into both dropouts. And you'll need to repeat the previous steps, starting at the point where you check that both cone springs are pointing inward. Perform three tests on your front wheel. First, with your helper holding the front of the bike off the ground, spin the front wheel to ensure it has no wobble or looseness. Second, while straddling the bike with hands on the handlebars, squeeze the front brake lever with your left hand. Rock the bike forward and backward and ensure the front brake is securely keeping the front wheel from turning and that there's no play or wiggle in the wheel, handlebars, or front forks. Third, inspect the quick release lever and ensure it has remained tightly closed and is not touching the front fork or any other part of the bike. Any sign of play or wiggle is a sign that you may not have properly secured the front wheel and that you should repeat the installation process. Perform these tests before every ride. Once your wheel is fully installed and tested for security, you may prop your bike on the kickstand. Locate the headlight, front fender, and mounting hardware for installation. Use a 10 mm wrench and a 5 mm Allen wrench to remove the headlight mounting hardware from the fork arch. Pass the fender from the back of the wheel forward under the fork arch and position the mounting bracket in front of the mounting point on the fork. Pass the bolt and washer through the headlight mounting bracket, then the fender bracket, and then through the mounting point on the fork. On the other side of the fork, place a washer over the bolt and then thread the lock nut on by hand. Use a 10 mm wrench and a 5 mm Allen wrench to tighten the bolt further and then torque to the value listed in your owner's manual. Position the fender mounting arms on the mounting points on the bottom of the fork. Pass the bolt with captive washer through the fender mounting arm and into the bolt end on the fork. Use a 4 mm Allen wrench to secure the bolt and then torque to the value listed in your owner's manual. Repeat the process with the mounting arm on the other side of the fork. Locate the headlight cable end with the red interior. Line up the internal notch and pins and the external arrows on the headlight connectors and push together without twisting. Adjust the headlight angle slightly downward so that it will illuminate the road ahead without blinding oncoming traffic. Use an 8mm wrench and a 3mm Allen wrench to tighten the headlight adjustment bolt. Check that the fender and headlight are centered. Find the pedals and identify which is the right and left pedal by the sticker on the pedal or the markings on the pedal axle. Apply a pea-sized amount of bicycle grease to the threaded portion of each pedal axle. The right pedal has a smooth axle and threads onto the drivetrain side of the bike. Carefully thread the right pedal by hand onto the right crank by turning clockwise toward the front of the bike. Be careful not to cross thread or damage the threads. The left pedal has grooves on the axle and threads onto the left side of the bike. Carefully thread the left pedal by hand 
onto the left crank by turning counterclockwise, also toward the front of the bike. Once the pedals are fully threaded onto the cranks, use the torque wrench with a crowfoot bit to tighten to the value listed in your owner's manual. Wipe off any excess grease. Next, we'll inflate the tires. Check that the tire beads and tires are evenly seated around the rims. Then, use a pump with a Schrader valve and pressure gauge to inflate each tire to the recommended PSI indicated on the tire sidewall. Do not over-inflate or under-inflate tires. Open the seat post quick-release lever and remove the seat post. Adjust the clamp so it's centered over the notch on the seat tube. Apply a small amount of grease to the seat post and install the seat post. Be sure the minimum insertion marking is completely inside the seat tube. Adjust the seat post up or down to a comfortable height. Tighten the adjustment thumb nut on the clamp with the lever in line halfway closed. When you feel resistance, close the lever fully, which should require enough pressure to leave an imprint in your hand. The seat post should not move once the lever is closed. Perform a handlebar twist test by standing at the front of the bike and bracing the front wheel between your feet and lower legs. Hold both handlebar grips and push forward with one hand while pulling back with the other. Push and pull with about 20 pounds of force with each hand. Check that the handlebar doesn't move out of alignment with the wheel. Then switch hands so the opposite hands are pushing and pulling with about 20 pounds of force. If the handlebar and stem rotate out of alignment with the front wheel, check the tightness of your stem clamp bolts and tighten if necessary. Next, perform a handlebar push test by bracing your front wheel against a wall and mounting the bike. Adjust the seat height so you can sit with your feet on the ground and hands on the handlebar. Squeeze the brake lever and push the handlebar toward the wall with about 100 pounds of force. If the handlebar rotates inside the stem, you will need to realign the handlebar and retighten the stem faceplate bolts. Be sure to torque them to the value listed in your owner's manual. Verify that the bash guard does not touch or interfere with the operation of the derailleur. If it does, gently pull the bash guard away from the drivetrain and ensure the axle nuts are secure and torqued to the values listed in your owner's manual. Check the bike's chain alignment by standing on the right side of the bike and rotating the right pedal and crank toward the back of the bike, as if you were pedaling backwards. Verify the chain moves through the drivetrain smoothly. Next, activate the battery by pressing and holding the battery button for at least three seconds. Do not insert anything in the charging port on the battery other than the provided RAD charger. Press the power button on the RAD UI remote to power on the bike. Before riding, check that all hardware on the bike is torqued to the values listed in the owner's manual. Refer to the owner's manual for instructions on how to adjust components on the bike for comfort and safety. If you're assembling the bike for someone else, be sure to attach the rider quick reference card to the handlebar. We recommend getting a tune-up from a local, professional, reputable bike mechanic within the first 50 to 100 miles of riding. Follow the maintenance schedule in your owner's manual. Work through the safety checklist in the owner's manual and test the bike fully before riding. Never let anyone operate this bike unless they are at least 16 years old and have read the operating instructions detailed in the owner's manual. The age requirement for e-bikes may be older than 16 in your area. Check your local laws and rules for the areas you intend to ride. Whenever you ride, wear closed toe shoes, comfortable clothing, and of course, a helmet. Make sure you can be seen by others on the road by wearing bright and reflective clothing and ensuring your headlight and taillight are always on and visible to others. E-bike disc brakes may wear out faster than non-motorized bicycles, requiring more service. Make sure to inspect brake components before every ride and follow the maintenance intervals listed in your owner's manual. Like all vehicles, 
e-bikes need to be checked regularly to ensure nothing will jeopardize your safety or the safety of those around you. Follow all safety instructions and checklists in the owner's manual. The latest update to the owner's manual for your rad bike is always available on our website at radpowerbikes.com forward slash help. Make it a habit to thoroughly check your bike before every ride. Reach out to our product support team if you have any questions and ride rad.